So thank you all for attending today. This is the Exploring EngTech registration presentation. My name is Amy Waters. I'm the IFE Compliance and Professional Standards Manager. So what are we going to go through today? So we aim to cover what is professional registration, the IFE and its relationship with the Engineering Council, why become EngTech registered, the requirements for becoming EngTech registered, the application process with the IFE and also our top 10 tips. So to start off with, what is professional registration? It's recognition through membership of a relevant professional engineering institution that an individual's competence has been assessed and that they have attained the standards required for admission to the National Register at the appropriate level. It's open to any competent practicing engineer or technician with different levels and pathways to registration available. The categories of registration have been developed to provide progressive registration structure. The IFE is, a li is licensed as a professional engineering institution by the Engineering Council. This means that we are licensed to recommend fire professionals for registration. And we are proud that we can offer these three sections of the register because of this license. And today we're going to focus on the Eng Tech portion of the register. So why become an Eng Tech? It's a way of demonstrating not only your commitment to the engineering profession, but also your competence, credibility and professionalism. The post nominals EngTech will mark you out as a skilled professional engineer and give the public and your peers a higher level of confidence in you. Why register with us at the IFE? You gain greater influence and professional recognition in the global fire sector. Enhances your career prospects and earning potential. The IFE gives you access to special interest groups, CPD tracking, and also industry vacancies. We also offer the IFE journal, newsletters and access to archive publications. We have local and international CPD events for members to attend. And you also get the use of an Engineering Council logo that reflects your registration status. So how do we assess your application? We take into consideration your academic qualifications and experience, the information contained in your professional review report, which is how you will demonstrate your competence and commitment. And finally, your commitment to undertaking CPD. We're going to go through each of these bullet points in a bit more detail later on. Applications to us follow one of two routes. There's the standard route, which put simply is that you have a qualification that is accredited by the Engineering Council as meeting the academic level required for each registration title. Accredited qualifications can be found on the course search area of the Engineering Council website. The individual route is for those who do not hold an accredited qualification. If you don't have an accredited qualification, don't worry, there's other ways that you can meet the academic requirement. You may need to provide more information about the qualifications you do hold and give us a full work experience history, which will help our individual route panel, also referred to as IRP, assess your suitability. They will review all of this information and will then determine whether your qualifications and or your experience are of an equivalent standard. When it comes to writing your professional review report, which is your A to E competencies, the UK spec is the key document for this. This is the UK standard for professional engineering competence. It describes the value of becoming registered in each of the three registration sections. It describes the requirements that have to be met in order to gain registration and gives examples of ways of doing this. UK spec enables individuals to complete the competencies and explains the steps necessary to achieve the professional registration title they are seeking. The A to E requirements demonstrate your competence as an engineer. And we'll go into what exactly these A to E's are when we go through the top 10 tips shortly.
When assessing your application, the reviewers will also look at your continuing professional development log, so your CPD. CPD is essential for maintaining and enhancing the required competencies and demonstrates your commitment to developing yourself. So what do we look for from your CPD? Firstly, we look at what you've done and when you did it. Secondly, and perhaps more importantly, we look at the learning outcomes. So this is what you learn from the CPD activity and how you're going to use this newfound knowledge. This sets us apart from other institutions who only look at the what and the when. It's often left blank by applicants, but it is very important that you fill the learning points in. So many people find the most challenging part of their application to be the section of the form that's titled the IPD objectives and supporting evidence. This is your A to E competencies. The section of the application form is designed to give you the chance to show off your competence, your knowledge and skill to the reviewers. These are our top 10 tips and I'm going to go through each one in a bit more detail now. Firstly, prepare and plan. There's nothing to fear when filling out your application. You're just being asked to prove the things you already know. There's no right or wrong answers. You're just untangling your experience into separate competency sets. Remember, where the UK spec refers to professional standards, it's the IFE code of conduct and ethical principles you're required to demonstrate and not any regulatory or technical codes of practice. Number two, all of the A to E competencies are equally important. It's important to think about examples or case studies that you're particularly proud of from your working career. Situations that you've handled professionally, tasks that you've done really well in your role or problems that you've helped to solve. You must remember this is about you. Some of your examples are going to fit into more than one area. Others may be specific to a particular competence. So what are the A to E objectives that you need to meet? The five areas of competence you need to demonstrate are A, your knowledge and understanding. This is showing how you've used your knowledge of fire engineering techniques or procedures and fire science principles in a particular situation or task. It wants to know why you chose that particular course of action. Section B is design, development and solving engineering problems. This is explaining the different ways in which you've applied your knowledge to the tasks. Section C is responsibility, management and leadership. This is evidencing what you did to plan and manage your work and the work of others to effectively, efficiently and continuously improve. Section D is communication and interpersonal skills. This is where you'll give the reviewers examples of your people skills, working with others constructively, presenting ideas and proposals effectively, and acting on awareness of diversity and inclusion issues. And then section E is your professional commitment. Your application must give examples of your professional and ethical behavior. They should demonstrate how you comply with the IFE code of conduct, how you recognize your obligations to society, and how you carry out your continuing professional development, all while upholding ethical principles. Number three of our top 10 tips, the key words hold clues. Make sure you read beyond the initial headings in the UK spec and look at the verbs as clues to what you'll need to demonstrate. You need to be methodical and use the key words of each section to help you. It might help to underline or highlight any of the key words or phrases within the UK spec that you want to include in your descriptions. For example, for objective A1 on the application form, the heading reads review and select appropriate techniques, procedures and methods to undertake tasks. 
when you go to the UK spec for section A1, you'll see the keywords and phrases to use would be evaluating potential methods, recognising difficulty, identifying improvements, or carrying out or interpreting a test. Be methodical, these keywords will help you. Number four, don't be too brief. Make sure you give a detailed career episode that highlights a situation, task or problem and use that to demonstrate how you have met the competencies. As a guide, we look for two to three examples per competence. You don't need to use a new career per episode for each competence, but you do need to make it clear how the example demonstrates that particular competence. As I've said before, you can use the same episode as many times as you need to if it gives you the evidence that you need. Duplication is not necessarily a bad thing, as your assessor will read the whole of your A to E competencies. But do make it easy for them and cross reference if you need to. Top tip number five. This one may seem very simple, but use I and not we. Take ownership of the things that you've done and make it about your contribution. Make sure you're using I statements and not we did this statements. The majority of the information you include should be individual examples when you've taken action, when you've knew, used your knowledge to support others. Read through your st the statements that you've put in your application and amend anything that talks about what other people have done. Replace any passive verbs or sentences with active ones. Active verbs provide additional impact and include words like planned, developed, researched and recommended. If something was completed in partnership with others, you don't need to hire. You need to highlight your role and not theirs. Don't be afraid to show off in this, but always tell the truth. So tip number six, when completing your A to E, why did you choose that particular course of action? Why did you do what you did? Our volunteers who review the applications are a fantastic bunch of practicing fire engineers. They are not, however, mind readers. They won't infer things or read between the lines. You have to tell them your reasoning. Is there a particular standard you have to abide? You had to abide by. If so, tell them what it was. Once you've covered the whys, you need to cover the hows. So how you implemented the solution. What actions did you take? What were the outcomes of what you did? Make sure that what you achieved is clear. If it wasn't as success successful as it could have been, what lessons have you learned? What would you do differently next time? To make your answer especially strong, round off by relating this back to how you've shared lessons learned or how you've enabled yourself to undertake continuous improvement to move forward. Remember, you can always discuss your A to E's with a line manager or another referee. They might be able to help identify if there's anything you're missing or if you're in particular being overly modest about your role in a situation. Top tip number eight, you need to show that you're aware of diversity and inclusion. You need to ensure that you provided evidence of this within your competencies. You could use a situation where you have demonstrated this. Examples of this are on the slide now. So have you had a situation where you've had to manage your emotions? A situation where you've maintained productive working relationships? Where you've been supportive of other people's needs? Or maybe you've had to achieve a collective goal? Tip number nine, CPD as a cycle. In section E4, you'll be talking a lot about your commitment to continuing professional development. It's important here not just to list the events you've attended or the reading you've done. 
you need to demonstrate the equivalent of 25 formal hours of CPD per year, which can be made up of a mix of attending courses or informal learning, such as reading journal articles. The IFE also takes an annual sample of all of its Engineering Council registrants as part of its licensing agreement. To assist our members in producing their CPD logs, we do offer My Career Path in conjunction with Engineering Council to record your CPD. The intention behind the CPD sampling is not to police our registrants, but to encourage a culture in which they take natural ownership and engagement in CPD activities and ownership of your own learning and development. And finally, our top tip number 10, ethics. Your reviewer wants to see that you understand the relevant codes of conduct and can explain why they are necessary and how you will adhere to them. You'll demonstrate this in objective E1 to E5. It's quite easy to miss the point here. The professional standards relevant here are the ethical values that you commit to society, the environment and the engineering profession, not any British standards or legislation. Be methodical and make full use of the guidance available. You'll see on the slides that the IFE have a code of conduct and a whistleblowing policy, both of which are available on our website for you to use. If you have any questions when you're making your application, please email these to ngc at ifa.org.uk. On this slide, you will see our HQ team. And between us, we've got approximately 20 years experience in helping individuals gain their membership and professional registration. So in terms of next steps for making an Engineering Council registration application, if you're not already a member, you can join online today as an affiliate, and this will gain you access to all of the IFA member benefits in preparation for your professional registration application. You can go to our Engineering Council page on the IFE website, which has more detail on registration, the application forms you'll need, and also any relevant guidance documents. Remember, there is lots of help and advice on hand. We have the dedicated IFE members of staff, and we also have other volunteers, you will likely have colleagues who have been through this process who will be able to give help and advice. If you have any queries whatsoever relating to Engineering Council or membership, the two web, two email addresses are on the screen now. There's no such thing as a silly question, so feel free to send us any questions and queries you have. And finally, thank you for listening.